Hello, I have made it to my land. As you can see, this is the uh, 10 acres that I bought. This is actually the back of it. There's a front half where my outbuilding is. This is where I'm planning on doing the building where apparently there is uh, bedrock about three or four feet underground. Uh, it should be about in the center of this field here, which is actually perfect because I want to build in the center of the field so that if I continue to expand by adding more rings to the structure or more torus shape uh, 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 building uh, uh, parts, then uh, then I'll need as much space in both directions. So I want to build as close to the center as possible. So I'm going to flip the camera around so I can show you guys uh, what I'm doing here. So you can see that uh, there's this line here coming from one of my fence posts. Let me get a little closer so you can see better. As you can see, I have a post here in the center and this uh, le length of twine going all the way to the edge of my property. And what I did is I, I took the, the twine, I ran to both edges of my property, and then I walked the twine back and tied it to one end so I could find the center of the property. And so that's where this post is here. Here, But I've got the measurements done. So I'm not sure if you can see, let me, let me back up a little bit. There are some flags here that go all around the edge. We have blue and then we have green. The green flags may be a little hard to see, so I'm gonna get a little closer to those. You can kind of start seeing them here. The green flags mark the center, the inner center of the torus, right? So this is where the garden will be, in the center here. And you can see we have our post here, which is uh, what I've used to attach this twine. And then I use the measuring tape to measure 21 feet for the inner uh, radius of the torus and then another 17 feet beyond that. So we want the inside of the torus ring to be about 15 feet wide, but the uh, compacted uh, polypropylene uh, uh, woven bags, which are 18 inches in which are 18 inches wide, when tamped down and filled, should be about one foot wide. So because of that, I've made uh, the width of the torus marked by these flags as 17 feet. So for each side, we're going to lose one foot for the walls. So uh, you can kind of see how I've done that. Uh, it is quite large. Uh, I'm a little shocked by the size of it, um, but uh, you know, I think, I think that'll be fine though. Uh, I guess we'll see. So I've decided to rent an excavator instead of doing all this by hand. So I'm kind of cheating, but uh, it is tremendously useful. Uh, I'm able to do so much so fast, it is ridiculous. So I highly recommend them. Um, it's kind of hard to see uh, the excavator right now, but you can kind of see. I've, I've dug quite a bit, uh, so I've done all this maybe in like 20 minutes or so. So I imagine I should be able to do all this in maybe just a few hours, maybe five hours or so. So I'm gonna get back to it. This probably would have taken me weeks to do by hand, but I was able to do it in a mere eight hours with this beautiful excavator, thanks to toolrent.com. So this is gonna fill up with water eventually. Now, what I want to have happen is have the water get to a level in which I can tell where the unevenness is. So instead of using a level, for example, I'm just going to wait for it to rain, and my moat here is going to fill up with water. And you can see here, at the very low point of my moat, there is a channel that leads into this spearhead-shaped uh, little pond here that I've made. So the idea behind this is uh, twofold. One, to accumulate water that I will need to mix with the concrete because I, I don't want to pay $4,000 for a water meter uh, and then somehow get a hose all the way back here. I don't even know how that would work exactly, but. Uh, I know that if it rains, 
uh, the moat will fill up, and because this is the lowest point, the drain-off point, uh, the water will accumulate in this little pond here. And uh, when I'm ready to check the level of my moat, all I have to do is get some cinder blocks, block off the channel, and wait for it to rain. When that happens, the moat will fill up, but the water will not go through this channel, and I will be able to figure out where the unevenness is. Uh, and I will, by hand, uh, dig it out and then tamp the ground so that, uh, so that it's nice and level. Um, I'm hoping that uh, the uh, moat that I've dug is uh, level enough. It's kind of hard to tell, um, but I imagine that the, there is still a lot more that needs to be dung, dug at the top end, at the highest point of the moat up here. Now I was planning on having this uh, go three feet down. Um, four feet would be, I believe, the max because uh, once I hit four feet, there should be bedrock, uh, according to some surveys that uh, uh, a friend of mine, uh, Anders, was uh, looking up. He's an environmental engineer, and so he's been very helpful in uh, helping me uh, decide the build location. But uh, I imagine I'll have to do a lot more digging on this end of the moat um, once it fills up with some water. Of course, it looks pretty level from the top end. It's only when you go down to the bottom that it looks a little uneven. But um, there's a lot of loose gravel here, or a lot of loose uh, clay here that I'll need to uh, sort out. But um, uh, luckily, it's uh, loosened up. Once it dries up, it should uh, hopefully be easy to shovel out. I guess we'll see. Uh, yeah, I guess that's it. Uh, wait to, I'll see you guys in the next video.